Hello and welcome to Phuket Pulse JED Express Screencast with me, Teacher Market. Today's lesson focuses on GED science, specifically on chemistry. Today's topic is all about types and structure of mother. At the end of the discussion, every one of you is expected to understand, comprehend, describe, infer, and identify the different type of mother, including its structure. Now we begin with the definition of mother. In chemistry, it is defined as anything in the universe that has mass and takes up space. So example of it would be air, all liquids, and all solids, including gases. Now, what is not matter? There are two common forms of energy that are not matter. It could be light energy or heat energy. Can you think of other materials or objects that you can identify as not matter? Mm -hmm. Now, what is matter made of? Matter is technically made of tiny particles called atoms. And atoms have mass and take up space. So basically, the parts of an atom are called protons, which is the positive charge, the electron, which is negatively charged, and the neutron, which is the neutral charge. Now, we have here the states of matter. Matter can be identified as solid, liquid, or gas, depending on the arrangement of atoms. For example, the particles are packed tightly that could be identified as a solid. If it's spread apart and bump into each other slightly, that could be identified as a liquid. Whereas if it's spread apart, move quickly, and bounce off of each other, that can be identified as a gas. Now, a matter can neither be a pure substance or a mixture. Now, when we say pure substances, it can either be an element or a compound. An elements are those that can be found in the periodic table and can contain only one atom. A compound is a combination of two or more elements. Now we have mixture. It can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous. When we say homogeneous, the materials or the substances can be identified and it is physically mixed together. When you say heterogeneous, the substances that was involved can be identified and on this manner it's easy for you to identify the different parts that was mixed next we have here an element an element is a matter made of only one kind of atom so there are almost 150 known elements and 90 elements of this are naturally occur. The elements are organized according to their property, properties on the periodic table. Examples would be hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, calcium, sodium, and oxygen. Now, we have here the word compounds. Compounds is mainly a combination of two or more elements that are chemically combined. So, compounds cannot be easily separated into their elements, such as water, salt, and sugar, or glucose. Now, we have here the gases for hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, which are naturally existing as compounds of two atoms of their elements. So, these are also known as diatomic, like for example, H2, N2, and O2. Now, we have here mixtures. Mixtures are generally made of different compounds that are mixed together, and it can be easily separated into original compounds by different separation processes. Now, we have homogeneous, which are substances that evenly mix, and heterogeneous, which, is, or which are substances not evenly mixed. Now, for the classification of elements, it could be metals or non-metals. Metals are mainly those elements that can be found 
on the left of the periodic table which includes the transition metals and nonmetals are the one which can be found on your left. Now for metals their physical properties would be luster, lustrous which is shiny, reflects light brightly, and conductors, heat and electricity move through metals easily. It can be malleable which can be hammered into shape. Ductile, which can be drawn into wires, and high density, which is heavy for their size. And we have nonmetals. Nonmetals are dull, which is not shiny, they do not conduct heat or electricity. Brittle, which breaks or shatters easily, and has a low density. Now, if we're going to compare physical versus chemical properties of matter, it could be physical properties wherein matter can be observed and measured without changing the kind of matter being studied, or chemical properties wherein matter are not usefully visible and a change in the matter does occur. Now, the physical properties can be used to identify a substance such as melting point, boiling point, density which includes heaviness, color and the power of hydrogen or pH which indicates the acidity and basicity of a substance. Now for chemical properties of matter, it can help identify a substance and it can only be seen when there is a chemical reaction involved such as burning, rusting, or chemical reactivity. Now that would be all and for the references that we have used for today's lesson, you can read this in advance and you can just go and search for Cambridge Chemistry 3rd edition or visit ck12.org under Physical Science Middle School. Now, check out the second part of this video on my next screencast. That will be all and thank you so much for watching. Since you are still here already, might as well subscribe to our channel. If you find this video use useful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to connect with us, you can visit www.pocketpulse.org or go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash pocketpulse. If you have questions or inquiries regarding our organization, you can contact us directly through line or give us a call at 081-417-0978. Thank you so much and I'll see you on my next screencast. Goodbye everyone!